quick. I want to tell you a story about the first time I saw a Lamborghini. It was late at night, and I was with my buddies driving home from dinner, when suddenly this beautiful white Lamborghini Murcielago pulls up in front of us. And we followed it all the way down the street. As the car drove by, everyone turned to look at it. Everyone, the kids, even the grandparents, they're all pointing and smiling, and they're all excited to see it. I was excited to see it. And since the Lamborghini had its roof down, I was able to see the driver. And I thought it was going to be like some old rich man, but it wasn't. It was some guy around the same age as me, wearing a baseball cap. It could be done. You know, you could be rich at a young age. And, I, and that day I, I turned to my friends when I was in my car, I turned to my friends and I said, that's going to be me one day. How many of you guys think that most millionaires are rich because their parents are rich? See, according to the book, The Millionaire Next Door, 80% of millionaires are first-generation millionaires, which means that their parents were not millionaires. In a 2012 Fidelity survey, 86% of millionaires are self-made. So, it's really easy to become a millionaire, even in this day and age. And with the creation of the internet, I want to say that it's actually even easier now than it was before. I remember that when I grew up, I envied the rich. I felt defeated because I wasn't born with like an extraordinary talent. You know, I'm not great at singing. I'm not a rapper. Uh, I'm not good at sports. And, and I wasn't born in a rich family. It's actually quite the opposite. See, my parents grew up in the slums of China. My father lived in a farm run by the communist regime, where he was forced to work for only a few cents an hour. My mother lived in the projects, and I still remember the day I visited her hometown and the apartment that she grew up in. And in the room was a bunk bed, meaning the bed took up half of her apartment. I think there are jail cells in the U.S. that are bigger than my mother's apartment. They both saved and borrowed money from their family to immigrate to New York City in hopes of finding a better life. My father was so poor when he arrived in the U.S. that he was forced to sleep in a YMCA. My mother came into the U.S. without much either. Since she didn't speak English at all, she made a living by working in a sweatshop in China. Eventually, she met my father through a mutual friend and got married and had my brother and me. So, fast forward 20 years, it's about half a decade ago, and I was in college. And in college, I learned computer science and engineering. I fell in love. I had my heart broken. I drank alcohol. I experimented with drugs. I got arrested. In my first semester of college, my GPA was only a C plus. So I played a lot of video games that year. A lot of online video games. And I knew that I had to change. So I stopped playing so many video games, and I started to study more. But the biggest impact on my life was that I went out and started to learn things on my own, outside of college. I learned PHP, I learned JavaScript, I learned CSS, I learned SQL. I basically learned all the web development on my own. After I graduated, I worked at a tech company in California called Earthlink. They hired me because I had a lot of experience in web development. I got paid a good salary and I was happy with my life, and I was pretty happy with the way things were turning out. In October of that year, I received a phone call that changed my life forever. It was my aunt on the other side of the line. She called to tell me that my father had passed away. He was ill, and we thought he would recover, and none of us expect expected him to succumb to his illness. We were all devastated. Bruce Lee once said, Do not pray for an easy life. Pray for the strength to endure a difficult one. The next few months that followed were the most grueling months I ever faced. Unfortunately for us, he passed away at the beginning of the recession. To make matters worse, my father's sudden death caused my mother to start having mental problems. So I moved back into my mother's house in New York to take care of her. This move across the country ended my relationship with my college girlfriend. 
My brother, on the other hand, he stayed in London to continue being with his college girlfriend of over four years. This meant that for months after my father's death, nobody in my family would make an income. I eventually found a job in Columbia University, and they gave me a MacBook as my work computer. As soon as I got the MacBook, I learned a new computer language called Objective-C on my own. It was a language used to code iPhone apps. Ever since I was young, I had a fascination with learning new skills and using those skills to help people, or at least create something that people found useful. His passing was unexpected, but it pushed me out of my comfort zone. Since I was the only one in my family making money at the time, I had to step up at, as the breadwinner, despite being only 22. So I knew that I had to work on a more profitable side business during those times that I wasn't working at my full-time job. Thus coding apps during my free time made sense to me. While my peers were slowly eased into adulthood, I was pushed into the deep end of the pool without warning. I went from being a dependent to an independent, and the burden and responsibilities and stress that I received only worked to strengthen my character. But I wasn't always that strong. I admit that I had contemplated suicide during the days when life was too unbearable. But I could never go through with it. I knew that if I did, nobody would take care of my mother. Suicide was a coward's way out. I mean, I, I had fantasized about it. For those thinking about suicide, or will be thinking about suicide in the future, please realize that it's a really stupid way out. As with stocks and roller coasters, when you're at the lowest point in your life, you're only giving yourself more room to go up. But why leave the world at the lowest point in your life? You're gonna miss out on all the wonderful things that have yet to come. Some might think that it was pure luck that I became successful from selling apps. And I don't blame those people for thinking that way. It's an easy to swallow way of comprehending the situation. Luck is an excuse that some people tell themselves to not try. The most popular app that I created was called Fibo Radio. In other, in other words, it lets you listen in to what the police are saying on the police radio. It has since expanded to include firefighters, ambulance, air traffic control towers. In 2009, it became the number one paid app in November. That app has helped a lot of people in numerous ways. I get emails from policemen and firemen thanking me for the app because sometimes their own radio wouldn't work and then they would switch over to my app. And then I get emails from people saying that the app helped them during natural disasters because they can get real-time information from my app faster than the news media will report. So during tornadoes and hurricanes and tsunamis and floods, my app usage goes up by a lot. Sometimes ER doctors use my app to get real-time information about who's going into their ER. This gives them time to prepare their ER for the victims. Someone once asked me, what differentiates you from the thousands of Google and other big tech companies employees? How come you're so much more successful than them? Are you simply a better coder or more creative or maybe got lucky? Google and other tech companies employees, they code things for other people and they let their bosses and companies, they benefit from the profits that their code generates. So corporations like Google are making billions of dollars in profits. And the reason for this is because there are always employees who are willing to work for less. To be honest, I don't think even Google would have hired me if I applied. I don't doubt that there's Google's employees that are smarter than me, who can code better than me, but sadly that the money that should belong to them is taken away and redistributed to shareholders and to upper management. They'll escape from the time-consuming 9 to 5 office job, and they could work alone, like I have. It's much easier said than done. I mean, I, I wasn't really that brave in the beginning either. So instead, I actually stayed at my job. I stayed at my 9 to 5 job while I was working on my apps. But what separated me from the Google employees is that during the nights and weekends, I was working on my apps. There are days when I didn't even sleep. There are, there are some weeks where I worked 72 hours straight with only two to three hours sleep. 
And I kept working and working because I had to provide for my family. And even though I made millions now, I still sometimes code nonstop and have sleepless nights. If your income is based on the number of hours you work, then there's only so much money you can make. But if you base your income on the number of downloads you get, then you could potentially make millions by charging a few dollars each to each of those millions of users. This is the same concept as to why movie stars and singers and athletes and book writers, they make millions. They are serving millions and billions of people, whereas a doctor can only see one patient at a time. All right, one last piece of advice. Don't chase the easy money. And I have one last question for you guys to think about. If you flip a coin and it lands heads 99 times, what are the chances of it being tails the next time? Some people think that it's more likely to be tails, but it's not. It's always a 50-50% chance when you flip a coin. A coin has no memory of what it was flipped before. But some people don't understand this concept, and that's why gambling is an addiction. They hope that the universe would balance, them, balance itself and make them win again after losing so many times. But the truth is, life is not like that. The universe does not tip the scale for us. And we have to make our own winnings from what we're dealt with in life. Thank you very much.